So the transom lights is what really gives the this floating ceiling and, and open airy floor plan kind of its uniqueness. What else do you want to say in regards to um, how that um, design element uh, is, is featured and what it does for the house? Well, one thing that I think it does achieve is that the, uh, the roof structure is completely free floating. There are no supporting walls in the house. So that a new owner is totally free to rearrange partitions, rearrange spaces, uh, to fit their own personal needs. This was very important to me as an architect, and uh, I think it will be important to anybody owning the house and living in the house after we do. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the kitchen and the way you designed the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is very large. It's very large on purpose. I had a, a wife and two daughters, and it was the kitchen is designed so they can all work in there together. Uh, the uh, kitchen equipment that we installed at the time the house was new was absolute state of the art, uh, and uh, uh, no expense was spared in. <laughs> Providing it for my wife and daughters, okay. and I think they enjoyed uh, for many years enjoyed making use of it. Okay, and I notice you have sinks that flank either side of the kitchen. Was that more for convenience? Well, the the kitchen is designed, as I said, for so that three people can work in it at once. Uh, the kitchen is sort of a, more or less a, a, has a traditional work flow in the sense that one side is uh, preparation, has its own sink, its own sinks actually. The other side is uh, uh, cleanup and it of course has its own sinks as well in addition to uh, dishwasher. So the design is more prep, cook, and clean, and laid out in a way that's wide open. Right. So that way you have three cooks in there who are not on top of each, each other. other. Exactly. Each doing their own thing uh, and uh, staying out of there. And I, I also can, can point out that you have an openness from the kitchen island, which houses the cooktop yeah. that's open to the dining room area. And all around all three walls, you've got floor to ceiling windows. Yeah, this is not perhaps entirely uh, traditional or common, but it was the way we wanted to live as a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, could a uh, could could the uh, uh, interior di kitchen dining area and and the preparation area be subdivided, be walled off? Yes, be easy to do. It's just not the way we wanted it to live. Okay. And right attached to the kitchen, you have another room. And that can be used as a home office or a maid's quarters, yeah. a chef's quarters. How have you used it over the years? Uh, well, it's now used as an office and guest room. But uh, when we had, a, a, our family was bigger. We had a, uh, a nanny, and uh, she lived in that room, and uh, she had her own bathroom, and as, uh, as her own, if she, if she came home at night, uh, and we were entertaining, she had her own entrance, okay. which we found uh, uh, very convenient, and um, I think she did too. Okay. So you had two full-time children as you raised them here, and then two children who came to uh, visit from time to time. Um, so a total of four children, which is what um, you have the four bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, the two larger bedrooms you said were used for um, the children here full-times, and the smaller rooms for, for more of the uh, children who were here doing visitation and, and visiting time. Uh, but you have something very unique in, in, in two of those rooms, uh, a partition 
that has been removed so you can combine the room to make it a larger room. Yeah, the uh, the uh, uh, fact of the, uh, regarding roof support, which I just mentioned, uh, it was uh, led us to uh, permit us to do that. Uh, we took uh, a partition out, uh, combined two children's rooms into one bigger room, and in as much as the partition uh, did not support the roof, we were able to take it out uh, with great ease and combine these two spaces uh, naturally and economically.